I haven't been this excited for a new AV receiver until I saw the specs for the new Denon X3800H. So let's do a quick unboxing and see what we can do with this highly anticipated new release. We're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I am back. What is up, everybody? Chana D here on location. I, I'm totally kidding. I'm just, I'm at work. I'm, it's 2.30 in the morning. So while you're sleeping, I'm working. So hopefully this video should be out Wednesday morning for you guys to check out. I want to do this as fast as possible because I know there's a lot of questions. And I want to make sure everybody knows exactly what this AVR can do. Now, the X3800H was sent over to me by Dream Media Home Theater. If you guys need anything from AVRs, projectors, screens, speakers, external amplifiers, all that stuff, Dream Media Home Theater is your one-stop shop for all your home theater needs. Make sure you go check them out. Link is down in the description and tell them Techno Dad sent you. Now, if you're new here, you probably don't know this, but I have been making Dolby Atmos content, not like this content, but actual Dolby Atmos content that you'll have to download and you can play in your home theater. You click the link in the description, sign up for my email list, and you'll get access to all those stuff. It's free and it's awesome. You should definitely check it out. But now let's get into the unboxing. Now this AVR comes with pretty much everything that all the other AVRs before it came. I've had the 3600H, the 3700H, the 4400H, the 6500H, the 6700H. They all came with the same stuff. We're not going to get completely into it. If you want to see an unboxing and know every little thing that comes with it, I'll put a link to Shane's video down in the description, but pretty much it's the same stuff. So one of the things I really wanted to do was fire this bad boy up and check out the new user interface. Right here is just walking through the standard setup wizard, which is totally been revamped. We have new animations and an overall very, very polished look as well as a higher resolution. Now going through the setup wizard, there isn't a whole lot new. It's gonna ask you what kind of speakers you have. Do you have a center channel? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have height channels? But the one thing that is different is that when it gets to the subwoofer, it's gonna ask you how many subwoofers you want. Just for fun, I said I had four. I don't have four subwoofers, but you know, I just wanted to see what it would do. So you can see all four subwoofers in the diagram here. Enough with that nonsense. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's jump into the menu to actually see what kind of configurations we can get out of the X3800. Oh yeah, super excited for this part. All right, so here we are, my favorite part. Let's check out exactly what this AVR can do. I hit the setup button and here we are in the setup menu. I can tell you this right off the bat, I am really digging this new menu. This looks great and this is gonna be the new menu moving forward for all the new Denon X2800, 4800, 6800, 8800 or whatever they're gonna call it. This is the new, new, new. Look at this. Look at all this, this looks great. So I'm stoked to check this out. And as you know, we normally just go into speakers to check out exactly what we can set up with this. Now we're gonna go into manual setup here. As you can see in the upper right hand corner, I'm on speaker preset two because when I was at home, you know, we tried messing around with it. So I wanted to start off clean. Couple of different menu items here that we need to check out. Speaker connection and tactile transducer setup. So let's go into speaker connection first. Okay, so basically what this is saying is your front speakers, the signal is coming out of both the speaker terminals, those are the regular speaker terminals on the back of the unit, and the pre-out as well. So now if we change it to pre-out only, the bottom says pre-out outputs are active, speaker outputs are disconnected for enhanced audio quality using only the pre-out terminals. So let's say if you have, you know, five channel or how many ever channel amplifier, you can go ahead and turn these ones off. Now there is a pre-out only mode, so let's jump into a few other things, but let's put these back to speaker plus pre-out just to see what the menu would say. Back out of here and go down to this tactile transducer setup. And as you can see, it is disabled, enable that. And at this bottom, it says enables tactile transducers, connect your tactile transducer to the subwoofer for pre-out. All right, 
Let's disable that again and get out of this. And now let's go into my favorite, favorite spot, Amp Assign. All right, so here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you configure your Dolby Atmos. If you did go through the normal setup wizard, it will walk you through all the stuff However, if you are adding height channels, if you are starting out with just a 5.1, which is what I have set up here, well, it looks like 5.4. Yeah, let's, uh, oh, let's do this. Let's go back out to speaker configuration and make sure the subwoofer is just set to one speaker. Okay, it is. All right, so let's uh, click on assign mode here at the top and let's just run through. We've got 7.1 plus a zone two. We've got 7.1 by amp for usually your front, 5.1 by amp zone two, and so on and so forth as you can actually assign all of the amplifiers or the nine channels to whatever setup you've got. All right, here we are, 9.1. Let's go down to height speaker and let's add two height speakers, okay? Now, as far as layout is concerned, we've got front height, top front, top middle, top rear and rear height. Now, if you only have 512, Dolby always recommends to have top middle pretty much so you can get all the overhead information that's there, okay? So that's how you would do that. Let's set that to front height and actually change this now from two channels and let's change this from two channels to four channels. So now we've got front height and we've got rear height. For the rear, we've got surround height, top middle, top rear, rear height, and so on and so forth. So if you have top front and top rear, if that's what your setup looks like, there you go. I always recommend front height and rear height because it will support Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and Oro 3D. Oro 3D is one of the big, big pluses of this receiver. Okay, so this is your 5.1.4, your basic setup. So let's go to view terminal config. And this menu has changed a little bit. This looks nicer. Everything is laid out here on what you need to connect. Obviously, you're not connecting any surround back, so there's nothing there. And it's got the speakers you're gonna connect underneath the little diagram. So this is actually really nice. I'm, I'm loving this new menu system that Denon has installed. All right, now let's go to what we wanna know about, and that is 11.1. Let's go. All right, so now, if you wanted to run 714 on this floor level, you got to change five channel to five channel and SB. That's surround back. And we've got our height speaker, four channels, right? We're running front height and rear height. And our pre out is designated as our front speakers. We do have options. Surround back can be externally amplified and rear height can be externally amplified. Now, in the previous generation, you could only select either the front or the rear height. So now they've added surround back to that. So there's a little bit more flexibility. We're going to keep that on front. Okay, so this is how you set up 7.1.4. Now, of course, you might have different uh, height speakers. Let's change this to top front, top rear. Boom. This is what it should look like. I don't know why they have the four subwoofers on the ground in the diagram when I've got it as set to one. Now, one of the things you definitely want to do is you want to back out of assign mode and you want to go into speaker configuration. Now, here you want to just make sure, you know, the speakers are, you know, small or large and the subwoofer thing, look, uh, see, it's, it's changing it on there now. I don't have four. And then it gives you an option of standard or directional. I would leave it at standard. That's just me if I had more than one subwoofer, maybe two like that. But for now, I'll just keep it at, at one. Now here for surround back, we have an option to go two speaker or one speaker. As you can see, the diagram changes when you make this change. Now I've had uh, one of my viewers actually comment about this. He has this setup here where it's technically six ear level speakers. And with the surround back, Dolby Atmos kind of does something funky. And when he was listening to my Panic Room extended Dolby Atmos mix, he noticed that the vocal that I put to kind of circle around the room, the vocal speeds up to get through the surround back area, even though it's only got one speaker. Dolby Atmos seems to treat this as a 514 as opposed to a 614. 
Bottom line is, if you're going to do surround back, make sure it's two speakers. Otherwise, Dolby Atmos will matrix something kind of weird. All right, so yeah, that's the speaker config screen. Let's go back into Ampassign. Let's say you guys have the Dolby surround, right? So Dolby surround, back surround. So you have the option of changing where the rear Dolby bounce is going to be placed on, whether it's gonna be placed on your surround speakers, you would select surround Dolby. If they're placed on your surround back speakers, it will be set to back Dolby. So you can see it there and it looks like basically you have no option. Front Dolby is grayed out and that's pretty much it. Those are a few ways you can run 7.1.4. Let's check out the view terminal config. And here you can see pretty much it's very straightforward. The surround back is connecting to your surround back. You have front left and right needing to be externally powered. So there you go. Now let's get into a 5.1.6. What does that look like? Let's go ahead and turn all of this to none. Let's go back up to five channel. Now, of course, you still need to have a sign mode set to 11.1 channel. Up here, this is where it tells the AVR how many speakers to process. So we wanna process 11 channels, so that's why it's up there. All right, so let's go with height speaker and let's go, boom, six channel. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we've got front height. And then we've got, if we move over, we got top front, which gives us pretty much six in-ceiling speakers. Um, front height and center height, oh! And then uh, front height, and then a middle layout is gonna be top middle or surround height. So if you guys were watching my latest videos about Dolby Atmos, this is the setup I was talking about, right? Front height and rear height. As you can see, rear layout is grayed out you can't even get to it so we've got front height and rear height and for the middle top middle pretty much in ceiling speakers now i will probably use on ceiling speakers in my space because i don't want to cut holes in my ceiling you could go with surround height those will definitely work but i think to get that authentic you know overhead something's overhead or rain falling down like in john wick the cemetery scene in the first john wick this right here is probably going to be the optimal setup as far as the heights are concerned. Now, of course, I would want surround back as well. So I would need to step up to the Denon X6700H, which you can still buy the Denon 6800H with all the new menus and all the new HDMI and all that kind of stuff. And the four subwoofers that's coming out at the end of this year to early first quarter of 23. So look out for that if that's what you need. So if we go into the view terminal config, we can see that the top middle speakers are gonna be connected to the surround back, left and right terminals, or you use surround back pre-outs. And as you can see on the far left, front left and front right are not being used from the Denon. You have to connect those up via the pre-outs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The, for the very first time in the Denon 3800H, so the 3600H didn't have this, the 3700H did not have this. This is an 11.1 Oro 3D setup. This is fantastic. Again, this receiver is under $2,000 and we're getting so much flexibility. I am jazzed up about this. So this is front height and center height. Okay, so you can see in the middle there, we've got height channel right above the center channel, above the screen, obviously at that same height layer. And the top surround is also known as the Voice of God channel, so we can run that. Now, if we move down to middle layout, we can change top surround to surround height and top surround. Now, I know the Oro 3D spec really wants to have this surround height set up. However, if you set up to surround height, you will downgrade all your Dolby Atmos to only front heights. So if you wanna run all three formats or all four formats, you know, there's also IMAX enhanced, although it only says support format for Dolby Atmos, DTSX and Oro 3D. All you need to do is change this back to top surround, which will give you a rear height, which is grayed out right here. Rear layout is grayed out. So front height and center height, top surround, 
and rear height. This 11.1 Oro 3D setup will also work with Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and IMAX Enhanced. So you have nothing to worry about if you set it up like this. The terminal config, and you can see that the surround back right is gonna be your center height, and the surround back left is gonna be connected to your top surround. And the pre-outs, obviously you can see the front left and right are not being used, so those need to be sent to an external amplifier. Now, of course, there is also the pre-amplifier mode. As you can see, all the speakers went to pre on the diagram. And here we have the 5.1.6 pre-amplifier. Let's go to the terminal config down here. And as you can see, there's nothing supposed to be connected to your speaker terminals. Everything is done with the pre-out section. Well, everybody, that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said before, the Denon X3800H has a lot of versatility and six height channels coming in under $2,000. That is insane. It's the first time this has been done, so I'm super jazzed up about that. And for a lot of you out there that can't do surround backs, but you can run six height channels, like three sets of height channels, this is definitely on your short list. So I'll have more videos about this, more setup videos. I know, I know, I have like seven or eight AV receivers now in the house and I do need to finish up my reviews on the Yamaha and the Arcam and the Marantz. So now that I finished the main wedding season, I'm gonna try and pump out as much content as possible. So make sure you subscribe up and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.